What's up everybody? Well, I got another unboxing video for you guys today. And today, I have decided to grab myself one of these little mini PCs. Main reason is, I started using my Ally to upload videos at night, and now I don't really get to use it very often, just during the day. So, I was like, well, screw it. If I buy one of these mini PCs, well then boom, I could use that to upload the videos. And then sometimes maybe even make some videos on that thing too, if people were interested enough in it. But, I figured, for this video, we could unbox it, and then we could also set it up in the TV in my other room there. In fact, I can just show you guys real quick. Let me take you guys off, maybe. There we go, gotta be careful. Luckily, my stand's got all sorts of stuff. So if we just come in here real quick, this is my setup for videos. I just got like a little dock for it down there, and I just have it hooked up to my bedroom 4K TV. And yeah, it just kinda upload videos from there at night. So I feel like now I'd rather use that guy. So that's why we will unbox this guy in this video. So let's plop you guys back into your little home. Lock you in place. There we go. And now, why don't we go ahead and get to unboxing. All right, before we actually open this thing up, let's just quickly look around the packaging. It's pretty much a no fluff box. It says mini PC, super performance mini computer and then on this end you've got the actual specs if we can get it to focus in we got a r amd r7 in there it's a 73 yeah 73 35 hx something like that 16 gigs of 512 ss 512 gig ssd and it's got a 6800 m in it and it's got wi-fi and a ethernet port as well and then on this side nothing on this side nothing besides like a upc thing nothing on this side either so that is pretty much it for the box there's pretty much not a lot to look at so now we can go ahead and get busy with the actual unboxing all right let's get this thing unboxed now so we can take a look at a closer look at it but before we do we of course need a cool unboxing knife so i just grabbed a random one out of my collection so now let's go ahead and un get this thing unboxed. I don't know how. I don't know if it's actually. Well, I guess it is pretty sharp. All right. Never know which one of these are just for show and which knives are actually sharp. You know? Not until I actually use them, and that's the first time I've used that one. I got so many in my collection. Oh, Misty, here's tape. No, nope, you can't have this. That would make you choke. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right, let's get down. Meow. I know. Such a silly. Oh, you gonna get me now? Cause I didn't let you do what you wanted. All right, we got the cellophane off of it. Is it? All right, cool. So this thing just slides right off. All right, and I'm assuming it's one of the ones that has like a thing that swings open. Yep, sure does. So we can just swing that open now. It's got a little bit of foam protecting it, so that's cool. And what else do we got in here? All right, it looks like it's got like a a stand, so that's cool. It's just a little plastic stand but better than nothing if you want to stand it up on something. What else do we got in our little box of goodies? I'm just gonna get this out of the way for just a second, and then we'll look at the main course after we look at this guy. I'm assuming it's just gonna be like the power strip and everything. All right, yep, it's a hunt key, and wow, it smells not great. But it's a 100 watt plug, which should be plenty for this thing. And then it's got some screws, probably for mounting to a uh, monitor or something like that, because there's no screw holes on this thing, so it's not for attaching that. And then you've got your actual power plug that goes into your wall wart. What else do we got? Oh, you've got a thing so you can add a SATA drive if you so choose. I'm just gonna stick with a MVME. I don't need a SATA drive in this guy, but if you were gonna do lots of work and a, like a eight terabyte wouldn't be enough and you wanna get a eight terabyte SATA, boom, now you can with this guy. And here's the user's manual. It tells you everything about it. And at least it does say stuff in English, how to actually attach that SATA hard drive I talked about and everything else. That's probably what those screws are for maybe. But anyway, that is pretty much everything in the little secondary little box thing that comes with it. So now let's get that all out of the way and let's look at the actual little mini PC itself. All right, well, let's unbag the uh, mini PC here, and there it is. It's got a, this is one of the main reasons I got it, because it had a big fan, so I figured it wouldn't be as loud, especially if it's not sitting there doing much. It should sit there doing almost nothing. And it's also got RGB for those who like it, but let's look at all the stuff. So you got your power button right there, I believe. Yep, power button right there. You got a headphone jack right there. You got two USB 3.0 ports and a uh, USB-C port there. Then you've got your RGB on and off right there. You've just got some ventilation on that side and just some ventilation on that side. And then for the back, you've got a, a uh, USB-C right there. 
I think that's for power. You got a 2.5 gig LAN, so that's cool. And then I think that's just a regular gigabit LAN right there. You got an HDMI 2.1 port right there and a display, I believe 1.4 port there and then two USB 2.0 ports here. So do not try to get high speed out of those. Those are just for hooking up like a external keyboard and a mouse, stuff like that. And then the bottom, just again, more ventilation for uh, stuff underneath the motherboard and that's how you would get into it. I'm pretty sure there's screws under these feet or possibly these also look like they come out too. So maybe you take it out from the thing, but it looked like from the instructions, like it came out from the bottom, but I don't foresee myself taking that thing apart for quite some time. So now, why don't we go ahead and go and get this thing set up in the other room and we'll go through the setup process. All right, we got it all hooked up, power and got the HDMI cable hooked up. So let's hope it didn't get broken in shipping or something and let's see if it powers on. Well, it at least turns on. I'm looking for any life. So far, I'm still not getting a signal from the HDMI. But sometimes these things take a while to post for the first time, so it could just be that. Oh, there it goes. Yep, it turned on. I think it's probably gonna turn us on into a setup thing. So also, let's see. Here we go. Turn on a little RGB before I put it on the uh, good old stand and walk through the process because right now it's just saying just a moment anyway but that's pretty much that so if you don't like it you can turn it off if you want some rgb you can have it so now i'll go hop into the setup process all right it is all booted up i got my cool new keyboard all hooked up it's actually metal and has a cool little trackpad so let's see how well it works though so yes i am in the united states i wonder can i just tap yeah cool i can skip i accept oh let's see we'll just name it what it is it is a fire bat. Well, fire bat, will this fit? Sweet. All right, next, enter a password. Okay, all right, mess that up. All right, I'm just gonna skip past this boring part. I didn't know there's gonna be this much just passwords here. So as soon as we're done with putting a password nonsense, we'll be right back. All right, all done with that, so. Now let's see, we can, I don't mind it giving me weather. I don't need to find that, my device. Um, let's see, we're just gonna go ahead with no on everything else. Next, I accept. Hi, hello, getting some things ready for you. Wonder how long that'll take. Shouldn't take too awful long. This thing's not like insanely slow. It's not gonna be the fastest computer in the world, but it's got NVMe. It's got eight core CPU. It's got a nice GPU. The only thing holding it back is they kind of gave it some pretty crappy RAM. It's like 4,800 megahertz RAM, but what do we expect for $360? The fact that it turned on and it booted on is already good enough for me. I've spent more on stuff and had it not even work. So this is already a win so far. We'll see how long it lasts though. It could work for two, three days and then die on me. But of course I will that report that to you guys immediately. I did say it's gonna take a few minutes. Don't know if I'm gonna sit here with the camera on this whole time. I think that's a little silly, so we'll be back once it's done. Well, after that, it pretty much went right into Windows. So I haven't signed into my actual account yet or anything like that, but figured we'd real quickly just look at its specifications. You got Ryzen 7, it's a 7735HS, 16 gigs of RAM. Got some updates to do, I'm sure, on Windows. So there's that. And then we can also just real quickly take a quick look here at all the CPU specifications. Right now we're sitting at five gigs, just sitting on the desktop, but I could easily just make Windows eat a lot less RAM on this thing since I'm probably not gonna game on it very much unless somebody wants to see how games run. And I'll probably run a little just to show you guys how it does for gaming. But for the most part, it's just gonna be for uploading videos. So GPU, it just says 8 AMD Radeon TM, but it's a 60, it's a 680. So not quite as good as the 780, but it's not that awful far behind either. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and go download Cinebench and all that good stuff. And also like Geekbench, a couple of good benchmarking programs. And we'll just see what it gets for benchmarks real quick, as well as letting it do its updates and all that. And we will return after these messages. Well, all right, I got everything up to date and all that good stuff. So now I figured we'd run some benchmarks real quick on it before we wrap the video on up. Maybe do a quick boot test and all that stuff too, but we'll see. So that's interesting. This actually has DDR5. I wasn't expecting that. I figured this is gonna be DDR4, so that's cool. That'll help the GPU out a little bit, but it is 4800. So it's not like it's super fast DDR, unfortunately. But anyway, I'm gonna hit this. We'll let it do its thing and we'll be back. 
benchmark is all done and we got a single core of 2120 and a multi-core of 10,183. That's actually a lot better than I was expecting it to do, to be completely honest. There's all information about it, transfer rate and all that. 48, yep, so it's 4,800 MTs, mega transfers. That's actually the correct way to do RAM, but most people use megahertz, so even I do most of the time, otherwise people won't know what the hell I'm talking about. But that's that. So now, why don't we go ahead and move on to the next benchmark. I think we'll probably do Cinebench next, I think. All right, we got ourselves 663 for multi-core and 87 for single core. So this thing is obviously not gonna win any Cinebench benchmark competitions, but still, that's what we get for Cinebench. So now let's go move on to something more GPU orientated and do a little 3D mark tests. All right, so. We got 24,326 for Night Raid with a graphics score of 27,407 and a CPU score of 14,860. And it seems to say that we are average, basically, just a tiny bit above average. Or nope, a little below average. Now I look at it again, but not by much. I could run it again and we could get the exact same as average, but we ain't touching best. Not without like overclocking the CPU and like getting the best RAM it can take if the RAM's not soldered in or something. I still don't even know about that. But anyway though, why don't we move on to the next test? The wildlife score is just 13,724. So we're way under the average here, but I would have to reckon it's probably the RAM holding us back because the GPU needs fast RAM. Faster RAM means faster GPU performance. So if I put a little faster RAM in there and if I, if I was actually using the game, it would definitely help. I have to figure out if you actually can. I think you can. I'm just not 100 and I don't like to sit there and say absolutes unless I actually am 100% sure. But anyway, now let's go move on to a little bit harder to run tests where it's probably going to fall flat on its face like Fire Strike and Time Spy. Well, Fire Strike's all done, and like I thought, it is not exactly great for that. So we got a graphics score of 6857. Physics score actually wasn't so bad at all, 26,000. That's not bad at all. But then, of course, combined, 2245. So we end up with 6262 which is interesting, but I mean, there's nothing to really even compare it to because I doubt most people with these even bother running this. So now, just for fun, and even though it's gonna be really, really stupid, I'm gonna go try to run Time Spy and see if we can even do it. But let's go move on to that now. Well, Time Spy is all finished and we got a graphics score of 2199. So let's just call it 2200. CPU score of 9330. So CPU score again, isn't that bad. That's like pretty damn close to what my Asus G15 Advantage gets, which is funny. A little thing like that can match it, but hey, technology does advance. Technology does advance. But at least the Asus G15 Advantage absolutely poops on it in graphics score. But remember, this thing's under $400, so I actually think it's got pretty damn decent performance for what it is so far. But for now, I think that's probably good. I think we got enough footage. I think it's time to go wrap this video up. What do you guys think? Well, all right, guys. I think that's about a wrap for this little Firebat mini PC. For under 400 bucks, I'm impressed with it. I mean, it kind of had some hiccups at first where it didn't really want to, like, how's the best way to put it? It didn't like unzipping things very fast. Like, unzipping 3D Mark was actually pretty quick, which was a bigger file, but Cinebench took like 15 minutes to unzip, which I thought was just a little peculiar, but it is what it is. And then one other weird thing it did was when I was running Cinebench, the multi-core score, right at about the end, the Wi-Fi just shut off. Now, I don't know if that's just some low power thing it's got going on, cause it's like probably meant to be like a mobile chip in there. Maybe they got some weird mobile technology trying to put it to sleep, even though it's plugged in. I don't know. Or I thought, okay, even though it's a hundred watt brick, maybe the motherboard can only have like 30 watts or something like that. And then using the CPU at full tilt makes it go, oh, don't have enough for Wi-Fi, get that off. But why did it wait till the end to do it? That doesn't make sense. Maybe that was just it being weird. But if it's gonna randomly drop Wi-Fi, that's gonna make it kind of pointless for what I wanted. So we'll see what it does. And I'll definitely do a little review on this thing once I use it for long enough. And we'll report if it does anything goofy like that. And heck, there might even be like some BIOS updates or something for this thing. I doubt it. Most of the time with these things, you get what you get and be happy if it works. And be surprised if the company's still around two years afterwards anyway. But still, I'm pretty damn impressed. For under $400, you get a nice quiet uh, little system with plenty of I.O. and even has a little RGB for those that like it like me. And if you don't like it, you can shut it off and don't have to have RGB if you don't want it. Like it even comes default off, at least mine did. But 
in any case, that's all I got for you guys for this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, peace out, guys.